Hello, and welcome to the Coordinate PA tutorial for the designer. Today I'm going to show you how to enter a design ticket in Coordinate PA. Designers have a couple options here. The first option you'll see on your screen here is that if the project owner actually entered the project for you. Sometimes a project owner would go in and plan out their future projects. Maybe it's a month from now, two months, two years from now. Go in, enter their future projects, uh, and hopefully coordinate with others during that process. If that's the case, the project owner will go ahead and add the project and add you as the project contact as a designer. Go in the project contacts. In this case, I added Mark Lipka. He would be the designer in this role. He would go in and go ahead to the project tickets and hit create project ticket and enter his final design. I'm going to show you the process if you didn't have the project owner to enter the project first, which is okay. So let's first go back to the main page. I'm going to go ahead and click add project. It is a design still create project. This time I'm going to select the county where I'm working. In this case it's Butler County and Buffalo Township. And I'm going to zoom in here and find a location where I'm working. And this is just being made up as we go, but um, you'll know more about your project obviously when you're entering it. Let's say in this case we're going to be working on South Pike Road. I'm going to start the drawing here and just click away, mapping it out. And you probably notice something right off the bat if you're used to our web ticket entry application is that they only have six points to use. This has obviously more than six points. Maybe if you want to get a little closer, tighter here, you can also edit the boundary. You can go ahead and pull that in. I can zoom in here. I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in there. Go ahead and find the points and maybe pull that in. Maybe we're not working on the row and I'll, I'll get a little closer here to South Pike. Something like that. I like the changes. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'll zoom out a little bit here again to show you the whole area. And that's actually where I'm going to be doing the work. I'm good with the map. I've entered the map for the project. Let's go with the project name. Let's go with Paving Test 2. This is where you'll put your project owner. Let's say project owner, it would be put here. Project owner 1. This is the person that hired me to do the job as the designer. Project status is planning. And the work type is paving, facility type. This is all general stuff because I just want to make it a general training process here for you. So this is just a paving project and it's public works. I do not have a preliminary design, anything from 90 days out. You can actually put a preliminary design if you'd like. In this case, I do need a final design. I'm required to do so. So I'm going to go ahead and put a final design stage in here for, let's say we're going to design it anywhere from January 1st, just the whole month of January. Uh, we're going to do the design phase. After the design phase, we have a bid date. We're going to put that out to bid on February 1st after that's completed. And our construction dates, let's start there in the spring. If everything goes well with weather, we're going to start on March 1st. It's going to take us about a month to do that. So we'll go ahead and finish at the end of the month. And that's our construction dates along with our final design stage. That's going to be in the project itself. Two very important tools, make project public, make visible to all. If I'm a designer and I want to share with other designers and other facility owners, I'm going to make it public, which is obviously a very, very good step in sharing and communicating and coordinating efforts. The next one is to make project visible to all. That's a little different, and the difference is it's actually going to be shared with the excavators that have access to the Coordinate PA application as well. I'm not going to click this just yet. I'm not ready to go ahead and make it active and visible to all the excavators that have access to CPA. When I'm ready to do so, I can go back and make that visible to everybody. But in this case, I just want it visible to the facility owners and the designers that have access to CPA. As I said, the project owner did not make this yet. They just had me doing the project steps. I don't know what my contractor is yet. If I did, I can go in and put that contractor's name in here and add them to the project. In this case, I don't. So I'm going to leave that blank. I'm going to leave the project contacts empty. And I'm simply going to save the project. It's going to ask me if I want to create my ticket for this project at this time. Well, yes, I do. I want to create my final design at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And it is going to be a final design notification. I'm going to create the ticket. So the information that, that I didn't put in yet is the work site, which is the South Pike Road. The nearest intersections, let's pull a couple here. We got, um, let's see, Cole Road and Harbison Road. Let's say that. A couple of nearest intersections there. I do not have coordinates. I'm not going to add those. Location information. If you're working on multiple streets, I always stress that you put all the streets down in the location information. Anything that's going to help the locator find where you're working, the designed group at the facilities, understand where you're working so they can send you accurate maps or plans as well. So go ahead and put that information in there. Uh, we're doing some paving work. In this case, it's going to be, let's say, one foot deep. And it's going to be, I don't know, um, 10 feet by 2,000 feet. 
method of excavation, we're going to be, let's see, I think we're going to be milling here. Go ahead and put milling, and we'll just put milling machine there. We are working in the street. We're not going to go into sidewalk, public or private property. If we were to go into private property, it'll ask us in the front, rear, left, or right. In this case, we're going to stay in the street. My design contact information is going to show up here. The work's being done for my project owner. I, I used project owner one in the last section there. And then my project contact in this case, we're using Brandon, one of our local liaisons for Pennsylvania One Call. This person is the person that knows the most about the project. It could be myself, it could be an on site contact, something like that that you can put right here. And then our contact information there. Job number, pen dot number I have here. If you have them both, put them in there. Most importantly, you have a CPA project ID. This is what your design ticket's gonna be listed under. All the notifications and tickets are gonna be entered under the CPA project ID that you're, that's listed here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create ticket. And in one second, you'll get a web reference number. Once that's processed, you'll get a serial number in your email. And you can see a web reference come up here. You'll get a serial number in your email that the ticket is, is active. And then I'm gonna to go to my actual project tickets. And like I said, this takes a minute or two. When you go in here, you see your project, you see a tab that says project tickets, and then you can actually go ahead and click check for new tickets, and the tickets show up here underneath check for new tickets under that tab. So now I have a final design notification in the project as a designer. I can put preliminary design if I'd like, but I definitely need a final design in here. And if I have any documents to upload, I'll do it here. Very, very important for designers. If you have SUE documents, put it in here. What level of SUE did you use? What kind of mapping do you have? What kind of information did you gather when you did that SUE data? And you can upload it here in that tab so everybody can see that when the project uh, continues. It's very good for designers. One thing we, we tend to miss as designers is passing that information onto the contractor. This Coordinate PA application helps you do so. Once I know who my contractor is, I can go into project contacts, add them as a contact here. Let's say Norm Parrish is my contractor. I'm going to select Norm, hit Add, give them editor role so he can enter his tickets, hit Save. Now when Norm goes into the application and goes into the project, he can see the SUE documents, he can see the project documents, any sign-in sheets, anything like that that you had maybe in previous meetings. He can enter the, the documents there as well once he has his on-site meeting at the work site, his pre-construction meeting. And like I said, the, the most importantly, the SUE documents that you probably had uh, from before. Project communications can be done here as well. More project contacts can be added. Phases can be done. If this is very large and you're going to break it down into phases, you can enter phases and create tickets for those. But importantly, you have your final design here. You did the project. You did your final design. Now you'll collect the data that as it comes in and you'll upload it to the documents page and you'll get responses through here as well. So if you actually look at the tickets, you can view responses uh, for your ticket right there in Coordinate PA as well. Another thing to make sure you're aware of is the drawing exchange. Drawing exchange is an area where I can actually go in as a designer, upload where I'm working. The facility can go in and actually draw out exactly where their lines are on the maps that I provide in the drawing exchange. Everything happens right through the system, right through Coordinate PA. They can, we can send information back and forth from each other and everything is documented in Coordinate PA. I want you to go ahead and try to utilize that when you're doing design work. As a designer, your project can be done here. Now you're going to wait for the information to come through. You're going to wait for your data to get back from the facility owners and continue from there. Thank you for watching and have a safe day.